In a world where conflicts, grievance, and misunderstandings seem all too prevalent, the concept of forgiveness holds great significance. Today, we find ourselves immersed in a society that often glorifies forgiveness as the ultimate solution to heal wounds, rebuild relationships, and foster personal growth. However, it's crucial to examine this prevailing mindset and question whether the glorification of forgiveness truly serves us in the pursuit of a healthier and more compassionate existence. Greetings, I'm Vam Kang Bao, and I would like to present two responses to the arguments that have been put forth by the first opposition. Firstly, let us address the claim that the glorification of forgiveness leads to emotional healing and personal growth. While it's undeniable that forgiveness can lead to emotional healing and personal growth and relieve you from negative emotions and etc etc, this claim falls for three reasons. Firstly, while forgiveness can bring relief, it's crucial to acknowledge the significance of the other emotions such as anger and grief in our healing process. By prioritizing forgiveness alone, we may unintentionally suppress these necessary emotions, hindering our ability to confront and overcome the pain. Secondly, the glorification of forgiveness can create a power imbalance, pressuring individuals to forgive when they may not be ready or when the harm that has been done to them is severe or still going on. This can create a cycle of victimization and enable continuation of harmful behavior uh, as it shifts the focus away from addressing the underlying causes of transgression. Lastly, the argument fails to recognize the complexity of forgiveness itself. Not all situations warrant forgiveness, especially when repeated harm, abuse or systemic injustice is involved. By glorifying forgiveness, we risk neglecting the importance of accountability and justice. And besides, genuine personal growth and healing can also be achieved through processes such as therapy, self-reflection, and seeking redress, which does not necessarily involve forgiveness. And now turning to the second argument of restoration of the relationships. While forgiveness can indeed contribute to repairing broken relationships, this claim also fails for three reasons. Firstly, it assumes that reconciliation and rebuilding trust are always feasible and desirable. However, there are instances where forgiveness may not be possible or healthy, particularly when the wrongdoer shows no genuine remorse or willingness to change their behaviour. In such cases, promoting forgiveness will perpetuate a toxic or unsafe relationship. Secondly, an Exclusive focus on forgiveness may overshadow the need to address the underlying issue with the relationship. Rebuilding relationships require a comprehensive approach and encompassing an open uh, communication, setting boundaries and seeking professional assistance uh, where necessary. Forgiveness alone may not be sufficient to resolve the deep-rooted conflict patterns or harmful behaviour. And lastly, the glorification of forgiveness may have an unfair burden on the victim to initiate the process of repair. This can further, further victimise individuals who have already endured harm, uh, exacerbating power imbalance within the relationship. It's important to consider that the responsibility of the wrongdoer in actively seeking reconciliation and making amends rather than solely relying on the forgiver to carry the weight of the relationship's restoration. In conclusion, based on the aforementioned reasons, uh, it becomes apparent that the arguments presented by the first opposition are insufficient in addressing the complexities surrounding the uh, glorification of forgiveness, uh, the oversight uh, of multifaceted nature of forgiveness, the potential of suppression of valid emotions and the neglect of accountability and justice contribute to the weakness of the claims. And with that being said, this is the end of my speech and I rest my case. Thank you.